Good day. My name is Kevon Hills, Global Head of the Financial Modeling Group at S&P Capital IQ. The group includes former investment bankers and CFA level professionals with extensive industry experience. And over the years, we've completed thousands of models. Our primary responsibility is creating, converting, and troubleshooting financial models for clients using our Excel plugin. Today, we will review some of the basic guidelines for effective modeling and valuation. Relative valuation tells us the value of an asset is derived from the pricing of comparables or comps. The goal is to predict the future results of the company and to determine if it's undervalued or overvalued relative to its peers. Critical to this analysis is defining a set of comparable companies. For certain industries, there are obvious pure comps, such as Target versus Walmart, Delta versus Continental, and ExxonMobil versus BP. But for other industries, you may need to expand the scope for a more complete list. In order to avoid a flawed comp set, establish which parameters like size, industry, and operational metrics are most relevant to your company. The quick comps and competitors links on the S&P Capital IQ platform offers a great place to start. Once you have a well-defined set of comparable companies, the analysis can truly begin. It is imperative that you do not solely rely on just one valuation method. To highlight this point, I've combined a few of our templates to create a football field chart using the four most common valuation methods. Trading comparables analysis, transaction comparables analysis, leverage buyout, and discounted cash flow. As you can see from the analysis of this company, the various valuation methods yield very different results. So while this creates a good starting point, you need to dig a little deeper to properly interpret resu the results of a particular company. It is important not to focus on the multiple that most folks use as a measure of value, the price to earnings ratio, or PE. A true gauge for future results is PE divided by growth, or the PEG ratio. PEG indicates how much investors are willing to pay for the growth of a company. A stock is generally perceived to be undervalued if the growth rate of the company exceeds its PE ratio, and a high PEG ratio would imply that the stock is overvalued. It may sound like a no-brainer, but even seasoned professionals allow personal biases and perception to override hard financial analysis. Remember that the company's filings always tell the story. So comb the notes and make proper adjustments for non-recurring items for cleaner financials. Capital IQ does an excellent job of scrubbing the financials, as you can see here in the audit window. Adjusting the financials for one-time charges can mean the world of difference when valuing companies. Valuation is closer to science than it is to math, leaving room for assumptions. So trust your analysis, but always consider a range of possible results as assumptions are still just an educated guess of future results. Pay attention to the sensitivities tables and test a range of multiples, growth rates, and other variables for a more holistic view. Realistic assumptions for your projections are imperative to sound financial analysis. So don't be swayed by the hype as many were during the dot-com bubble and more recently with some of the hot internet IPOs. Take advantage of the significant insight of investment research, but use it as a sanity check and not the final say. Very often, the desire to get the most comprehensive list of a company's shareholders leads to the fairly common mistake of including mutual fund holders along with other types of holders, such as institutions and insiders. This results in double counting of shareholders. Let's take a look at the public ownership model from the templates library. Despite selecting all holder types, there are no mutual funds included in the list of institutions. This is because mutual fund holdings are a subset of an institutional investor's portfolio, and therefore, must be presented on an entirely separate report as displayed here. Note that American Funds is a top mutual fund holder of McGraw-Hill stock. This position is included in the report of all holders as a subset 
of the shares capital research and management holds as the institutional money manager of that mutual fund. So let's have a quick recap of a few of the pitfalls to avoid. Make sure your comparables meet the appropriate criteria and never rely on only one valuation method. Also keep in mind that PEG, not PE, is a more accurate gauge for future results. Do not ignore the financials since the company's filings always paint the most accurate picture. Remove personal bias from the analysis and do not get caught up in the hype by using realistic assumptions. And lastly, remember that adding institutional and mutual fund holders will lead to double counting. To help clients avoid these situations, the modeling group has applied the concept discussed today to a family of templates available in the S&P Capital IQ Excel plugin. I hope these tips will prove helpful as you dive deeper into your analysis. Thank you and have a wonderful day.